Hey guys, today we will be going to discuss about Parkinson's disease. So first of all introduction. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease whereby cells responsible for producing dopamine die off in the substantia nigra area of the brain. Dopamine is essential for movement as it acts as a transmitter for signals from the brain to other parts of the body. Parkinson's disease was discovered by British surgeon Dr. James Parkinson in 1817. It's considered young onset if diagnosed before the age of 40. The youngest recorded case of Parkinson's was a 12 year old patient. Parkinson's disease is twice as likely to affect men than women. Approximately 1 million people have Parkinson's disease and there are around 50,000 new cases diagnosed every year. PD is the second most common neurodegenerative disease after Alzheimer's disease. Now look on to the definition. Parkinson's disease that is PD is a complex progressive neurodegenerative disease characterized by tremor, rigidity and bradykinesia with postural instability. Etiology Genetic factors, accelerated aging, environmental toxins that is methylphenyl tetrahydropyridine, we call it as MPTP in short, and other toxins such as manganese, carbon monoxide, and methanol. Increased free radical and iron content in the substantia Niagara, drugs such as reserpine, ethanol, lithium, diltiasm, etc. Neurodegenerative disorders such as multisystem atrophy. Alzheimer's disease, post infections, and also brain tumor and repeated head injury. Pathogenesis Parkinsonism is caused by degeneration of pigmented neurons in the zona compact of substantia Niagara, resulting decrease of dopamine levels in the brain, which lead to motor defunctions, that is, resting tremor, bradykinesia, and rigidity. This is the pathopsychology of Parkinson's disease. Here the dopamine levels in a normal and a Parkinson's affected person are shown in the second diagram. Clinical features, rigidity, bradykinesia, tremor and postural instability. Clinical presentation, rigidity, one of the clinical hallmarks of the Parkinson's disease. Defined as increased resistance to passive motion, felt uniformly in agonist and antagonist muscles in both directions. Spinal stretch reflexes are normal. These are of two types, cogwheel and lead pipe rigidity. Cogwheel rigidity means jerky, ratchet-like resistance to passive movement and muscles alternately tense and relax. In the lead pipe rigidity type, no fluctuations are shown, but more sustained resistance to passive movements. Prolonged rigidity results in decreased range of motion and serious secondary complications of contractures and postural deformity. Bradykinesia. Akinesia means the absence of the movement. Movement of freezing may occur and are characterized by a sudden break or block in a movement. Hypokinesia, reduced amplitude of the movement. Here, the amplitude of the movement will get reduced in hypokinesia. Bradykinesia, slowness and difficulty maintaining movement. So, the movement becomes slow and also it will be difficult to maintain the movement. Movements are typically reduced in speed, range and amplitude. Rigidity and depression can also influence bradykinesia. It is most disabling symptom of PD. Tremor is the another factor. It is an involuntary oxidation of body part occurring at a slow frequency of 4 to 6 hedges. Parkinsonism tremor is described as resting tremor as it is typically present at rest and disappears with voluntary movement. Manifests as pin rolling tremor of hand. Resting tremors may also be seen in the forearm, jaw and the tongue. 
Lower limb tremors are apparent when the patient lies supine. Postural tremor is seen in head and trunk when patient tries to maintain upright position against gravity. Completely diminished during sleep. So, during sleep, we don't occur any tremor. Postural instability is the next factor. Narrowing of base of support. Competing attentional demands increases postural instability. Increasing difficulty during dynamic, destabilizing activities like walking, turning and functional reach. So, while walking or turning or doing any activity, there will be a difficulty to move. Contributing factors are rigidity, decreased muscle torque production, loss of available range of motion, particularly of the trunk motions and weakness. Extension muscles of the trunk demonstrate greater weakness than flexor muscles. Contributing to the adoption of flexed stooped posture with increased flexion of the neck, trunk, hips and knees. Here in the figure we can see that the man is heavily stooped. Forward tilt of the trunk is also shown over here. Motor planning and motor learning. Start to hesitation is evident especially when the disease progresses. PD patients typically demonstrate micrographia, an abnormally small handwriting that is difficult to read. On the left side of the slide, the micrographia has been shown. The freezing episodes occur and can be triggered by confrontation of competing stimuli. Poverty of movement is demonstrated by patients of PD in the form of hypomimia, that is, the reduction in expensiveness of the face. This leads to mental fatigue and loss of motivation. Procedural learning deficits are common in patients with PD, while declarative learning is usually intact. Gait An abnormal stooped posture contributes to development of a festinating gait. Characterized by a progressive increase in speed with a shortening of stride. Jait can be anteropulsive that is a forward festinating jait or retropulsive that means a backward festinating gait. Some patients are able to stop only when they come in contact with an object or a wall. So here in these patients the stopping becomes a bit difficult. Plantar flexicon contracture leads to toe walking and adds to posture instability. Sensation No primary sensory loss. 50% may experience paresthesias and pain, numbness, tingling, coldness, aching pain and burning also. Some of the pain and discomfort can result from postural stress syndrome secondary to lack of movement. Muzzle rigidity, faulty posture or ligamentous strain. Some can experience akathisia, a sense of inner restlessness and need to move. Proprioceptive regulation of voluntary movement may also be impaired speech, voice and swallowing. Dysphagia, impaired swallowing as a result of rigidity. Reduced mobility and restricted range of movement. This can lead to choking or aspiration pneumonia and impaired nutrition with significant weight loss. Nutritional inadequacy contributes to fatigue and exhaustion. Presence of sialuria, that means excessive drooling as there is increased saliva production and decreased swallowing. Hypokinetic dysarthria. It is characterized by decreased voice volume, monotone or monopitch speech, imprecise or distorted articulation and uncontrolled speech rate. Speech is hoarse, breathy and harsh also. Reduced mobility, restricted range of movement and uncontrolled rate of movement of muscles controlling respiration, phonation, resonation and Articulation is present in such patients. In advanced cases, patients demonstrate mutism.
cognitive function and behavior dementia occurs in approximately 20% to 40% of the parkinson's disease patients it is characterized by loss of executive functions like planning reasoning abstract thinking and judgment and changes in visual spatial skills memory and verbal fluency bradyphrenia disorders of intellectual function it is characterized by a slowing of thought and information processing patients demonstrate problems with selective attention attention hallucinations and delusions are common complications owing to eldopa toxicity depression is also common in the parkinson's disease patients The medical diagnosis for Parkinson's disease is accurate diagnosis is possible only with continued observation of evolving clinical signs and symptoms. The diagnosis is made on the basis of historical and clinical examination, handwriting samples, speech analysis, interview questions that focus on developing symptoms and physical examination are used in the preclinical stage. to detect early manifestations of the disease a diagnosis of pd can be made if at least two of the four cardinal features are present so while coming to differential diagnosis drug induced parkinson depression essential tremor normal pressure hydrocephalus cerebral hypoxia carbon monoxide poisoning kampavata A disease condition Vepatu described in Ayurveda may be correlated with Parkinson's disease. Generalized involuntary movements of all parts of the body or of the head only is called Vepatu. Sarvanga Kampaha Shiraso Vayur Vepayu Sangnakaha If we study the all available literature of Ayurveda, the following are the key observed symptoms of Kampavata. kampa that is tremor stamba that is rigidity chesta sanga that is slowness of the movement that is the body movement will be reduced vak vikriti speech disorder avanamana flexion posture chinamati that is dementia smriti hani that is the memory will get lost vivandha that is constipation kampa is described to occur many parts of the body including shirakampa that is tremor of the head osthakampa that is lip tremor hastakampa that is the tremor developed in the hands and padakampa tremor of the legs if you have any doubts or want me to improvise let me know in the comment sections below thank you